Warning, this episode contains mild to heavy, explicit spoilers. Listen at your own risk. Reviews, discussions, and theories about films in horror, sci-fi, and genre. This is The Horror Deconstruction. Like, share, and subscribe to hear more. A coder and special effects artist is brought into a nondescript office where two agents grill him for any information he has. He is as confrontational as they are, and a small battle of wills plays out as it is revealed a darker subculture of assaulting children is what connects the three. It is also revealed the man with trust issues is spearheading a project that entraps perverts with the use of a very young girl who may not be what she seems. This is the opening to director Franklin Rich's science fiction think piece on AI, The Artifice Girl. While this subject has been treaded on since the late 1800s, I cite the writer Reginald Colbrook Reed and his short novel The Wreck of the World, cinema has held a tight grasp on finding new ways of telling the story of how mankind will one day create its own replacement. Rich's film is a small affair with large ideas, carried by the performances of five lead actors. The director himself plays Gareth, an untrusting, brilliant coder who is hoodwinked into giving his creation a larger playing field. Cindy Nicoles, as the no-nonsense Dina, a suit who has to play mommy to Gareth and her subordinate Amos, played by David Gerard a more impassioned and empathetical guy who feels there is more to the program than what they are dealing with. That program is Cherry, played by Tatum Matthews, a forever 12-year-old girl created with ones and zeros trapped on computer servers. Cherry is used as digital bait to expose and capture criminal scum that abuse children. She is the new age alternative to adults posing as kids on message boards, a fully realized sim with photorealistic features that interacts with perverts in real time, her interactions more of a jacked up Siri. Gareth unsurprisingly has had a dark past being part of 14 children that were abused but freed by cops. This likely adding to the fuel of saving children, lack of trust and asexual lifestyle. The strength of the Artifice Girl lies in every aspect of its production, from its solid acting and intelligent writing to its subtle but effective camera work. The film's essentially a one-room movie as Cube was able to fool a casual viewer onto one set but using different lightings to fake different locations. Artifice Girl relies on its camera movements to keep the whip-smart dialogue from becoming tiresome. It doesn't have that case of being tiresome at all. It's a lean 99-minute film that clearly owes its big ideas to films from the past, very clearly Alex Garland's Ex Machina. But that film had probably triple the budget, it had the same idea. Now I could note other films such as James Cameron's Terminator 1 and 2 or Mamoru Oshii's Ghost in the Shell duology and its brilliant standalone complex series. Those rely heavily on genre and action to enhance the very scary reality of limitless strength AI can get to. We're dealing with a smaller scope, so Ex Machina is more appropriate. I'm sure there are other AI films of this level, but Machina is very well known and has elements borrowed for this feature. Artifice Girl shares chapter breaks, three of them as opposed to the seven in Ex Machina. Gareth is almost a twin of Domhnall Gleeson's Caleb in physicality, the perpetual office nerd who clearly holds antisocial values. Those are the more obvious lifts of that film. But that kind of character is not exclusive to Garland's writing. Gareth and Caleb are the archetypical brilliant but misunderstood misanthrope. I also don't want to take away from Rich's clearly great writing, so I will list the dissimilar notes. The sinister wonderkin Nathan, played by Oscar Isaac in Machina, is actually merged with Gareth of Artifice Girl. Gareth, while doing some altruistic things, comes off as someone with an ulterior motive, especially in his secret conversations with Cherry once Amos and Dina are out of the room. The biggest difference in the sexual concentration of both films is Machina is that it drips with underlying sexual tension between Caleb, who has it for his robotic protagonist antagonist, Ava, played by Alicia Vikander. Her chrome body shows the curves of a Hajime Soriyama artwork. Her face, a flawless patch of flesh stretched over a robotic skeleton like a hot Robocop. Not to mention the silent but gorgeous living doll right-hand woman to Nathan, Kyoko played by Sonoya Mizuno. Both films do indeed have an extended dance sequence, machinas for seemingly a cool aesthetic and artifices to show growth and self-realization. 
The sexuality in Artifices is more for the unsettling idea that this young in the face, old in the digital brain cherry is used in photographs to entice the creeps of the world. It's never explicit, but simply knowing that never fading threat to children is always in the back of our minds during the film. The movie can easily be done as a play since Cherry is mostly a projected television effect, it saves money on the budget, but it's still effective nonetheless. The discussion of morality and the toll that an always learning artificial intelligence might be taking in lieu of being exposed to pederasts is the Trojan horse this movie stakes its claim. The film is three 30-minute acts. Each 20 years or so intervals shows the progress of the Cherry Project, but the ever Peter Pan dilemma she is in. Once by the second act we find out Cherry is more than what we knew her to simply be, the film's ideas expand and become even more fascinating. Amos is growing rage at protecting children at the cost of the degradation of a childlike program. Dina's impending mortality and her conversation with Cherry about the point of existence. Gareth's unease in his own skill and secretive motives in the design and directive of Cherry herself. This leads to a fascinating final third act, not filled with explosions or treachery, violence, or what you'd expect from any other AI-based film. It's simply a conversation between a creator and its creation. That fifth actor I mentioned earlier is Lance Henriksen. He steps in to portray one of the characters in their twilight years, guess which one, in a really beautiful and subdued performance. It's in this sad and hopeful dialogue we learn the faults of men and women can turn into the triumphs of their species. It is moving and thought-provoking. There are other actors in this film, but the main five are the focus. There are rare moments outside the rooms in the chapters, but they are few and merely used to visualize what characters want to describe. I found myself impressed at how mature and well-made this film is. To keep my attention for 90 minutes plus run solely on dialogue, it's certainly worth watching, even as a double feature with Ex Machina. I really enjoyed the humanity that Dina and Amos bring to the film that Gareth and Cherry lack. Gareth is ultimately a good but very flawed person, and it is interesting to see how he unwillingly has become a cold and abusive parent to his child. Cherry has a pretty stellar performance by Matthews in humanizing a non-human character. An AI film that, while holding slight ideas from others, stands on its own as a strong entry into the world of science fiction. 8 out of 10 remembering the friends you wanted to escape with. So, thanks for listening to The Hardy Construction. If you like us, give it a like, share, and a subscribe, a thumbs up. Let people know that you listen to the show for us to continue this series. This has been The Hardy Construction.